Stop 5. Slavery. Micklegate Bar. After climbing up Micklegate, stop when you reach the bar, the old medieval stone gate, into the city. Micklegate Bar, the main medieval gateway to the city, probably stands on top of an older Roman gate into Eber Arkham. Through this gate came a diverse range of visitors to the Roman town, but the crucial invisible props that kept the Roman Empire functioning were the slaves who would have been brought here and put to work. It's impossible to estimate the size of York's slave population because, given their low social status, their existence was rarely documented. As the property of their owners, slaves could be beaten, raped and killed by their masters with impunity. But it seems these extremes of treatment were not representative of their daily lives. Young male slaves often worked in the bathhouses, such as the one we have already seen under the Roman bath pub. They would have washed their masters, scraped their skin and carried oil and perfume. The sort of bottles and tools used by these boys can still be seen today in the Yorkshire Museum. Women, on the other hand, might be sold to produce children, who then became the property of the master, or to care for the children of the rich, acting as housekeepers, nursemaids and teachers. Tacita is a fictional slave from a wealthy household in Eber Arkham. I was brought into this family to look after their two children and serve my master's household. Daily, I dress my mistress, some days standing for hours plaiting her hair, just so she can look presentable for her guests. Every now and then, the hot curlers burn my hands. When I'm not busy watching the children or cleaning up their mess, I also mend the family's clothing. I'm quite lucky for a slave. I'm welcomed as part of the family, but I can never forget my position. I will never be an equal and could easily be replaced. Some luckier slaves were employed in professions, in areas such as teaching, medicine and architecture, or encouraged by their masters to become specialists in a trade. A rare local example of such a slave is a goldsmith from Norton, near Moulton, about 20 miles north of York. This man is referred to in an inscription, stating, Good luck to the genius of this place. Good luck to you, young slave, in running this goldsmith's shop. Such a skilled man would have been well placed to eventually buy his freedom from his master, as in some cases, slaves were actually paid a wage for specialist work. It was law that freeborn Roman men and women were distinguished from slaves who were regarded as property. However, a slave could buy or earn their freedom, meaning that they became the equal of any free citizen. Once a slave became free, they were able to rise to a high rank in civilian posts or qualify for service in the military. In Eber Arkham, there are two notable freedmen on record. Publius Nicomedes, who was freed by the emperor, dedicated a statue to the goddess Britannia in New York. Another man, Caecilius Musicus, was a musician freed by his master Caecilius Rufus, who was a member of Eber Arkham's city council, the most powerful political body in the local area. Standing close to Micklegate Bar, we are reminded that slaves could also gain their freedom in the arena. Beyond the walls, following the line of Blossom Street as it comes through Micklegate Bar, roughly half a mile down the road, lies a Roman cemetery in Driffield Terrace, which may have contained gladiators. Between 2004 and 2005, 84 bodies were excavated at Driffield Terrace by the York Archaeological Trust. Those interred are all male, and most died relatively young. They are marked by frequent, and in some cases unusual, injuries, with over half of the bodies discovered showing signs of decapitation. Many of the bodies have an overly developed right arm, which is characteristic of training in weaponry from a young age. 
Some of the bodies show signs of having eaten a mazed based diet in infancy, suggesting North African origins. One man sustained perhaps the most curious injury, a bite, which could only have come from a large carnivorous animal such as a lion or bear. Spurious is a fictional gladiator competing in the arena at Eber Arkham. Here he describes his role as a privileged slave. I was born into slavery, and as a child I was sold into a gladiator school for training. Since then I have travelled far, and yet seen little of the world. We gladiators are some of the most privileged and highly trained slaves. Our food and treatment is good, better than some freedmen even. But we are still slaves, bound to live and die at the whim of our masters. Many of us hope to win our freedom someday. They call me a bestiarius. My speciality is fighting animals in the arena. Now, the path of my life has led me to the northernmost reaches of the empire, to entertain the people of Ibarakum, and this is perhaps as far as it will lead. One possible location of the amphitheatre is thought to be near to where we are standing today. Those successful in the arena could win freedom and fame. A good luck charm in the form of a bone plaque was found beneath York Railway Station. It is inscribed with the words, Lord Victor, may you have a lucky win, and is thought to have belonged to a gladiator, though its owner was probably not successful in gaining his freedom. The lives of slaves were often short and hard, but their participation in the history of Eber Arkham should not be overlooked. Their presence is a vital part of that society that flourished in York's Roman past. Looking out of the city, climb the steps on the right and set off along the walls in the direction of the Minster. <laughs>